Welcome back, Mislav here. If you are a beginner pixel artist or an indie dev, please listen up because I have two amazing things to share with you. First one would be an easy pixel art style that you can pick up regardless of your skill level. And the second one is how coding can actually make you a better pixel artist. You see, my friend is a programmer, so he needed an art style that he can easily manage, that he can draw all of the assets for, including the backgrounds and the props and the tiles and the characters, and he managed to find a game on Steam. It's called Return. And if you look at this art style, it's actually quite simplistic. It has no shading. One of the key skills that you have to learn in order to progress as a pixel artist is shading, but this style doesn't use any. It only uses silhouettes. The only thing that implies the sense of depth is atmospheric perspective. And atmospheric perspective is when you have objects going further away from us, they start to blend in with the color of the atmosphere, in this case, the sky. However, in this art style, animation can be a little bit tricky because there is no shading. So overlapping features of the body can be a bit tricky to pull off. This is where I come in with a little bit of help. Now, if you see this bus, he wanted to replicate this bus specifically, so we went through a few different iterations and finally landed at this design. I will show you how you can create this type of design very quickly and easily in just a few seconds. But if you want to download this specific bus, including all of his animations that were accepted, keep in mind that you can simply join the course by clicking the link down in the description, because that way you will get a very, very nice discount. Now let's talk about how you can quickly create this type of a boss. Quite simply, click on and enable your symmetry tool. Use very dark colors because this art style is very suitable for dark fantasy or dark sci-fi type of settings. It's not really all that suited well for cheerful and happy games, although if you're creative perhaps you can pull it off. So once you have your symmetry tool turned on, then you can just go and start blocking in the shapes of the body of your character and very quickly in just a few seconds you will be able to have some resemblance of a body then you can create arms if you want to you can even create some extra additions if you want to have him multiple body parts and remember if your character is supposed to be scary use plenty of spikes okay so spikes are always good for enemies you can also use the eraser tool to just carve out some of the edges to create some interesting shapes you can also do that same thing right here in the middle and so on so you can create various different designs in a very quick and easy way now let's talk about the animations and how knowing which animations to create and in what way can actually make you a better artist and this is very tightly connected with coding so again if you want to learn how to code a link is down in the description now first of the positions or rather the animations is the idle pose and the idle animation. This would be the pose, this would be the animation. Why is this important? Because every enemy in the game should have a state, it should have a behavior. And when you are making a game, you have to decide, okay, how does this enemy behave? What are its possible animations? So when you are drawing the animation, you make sure that you do not draw too many animations. There is no sense in me creating animation for this character which is not going to be used. All of the animations for this type of a boss will be symmetrical. This makes things a lot easier for beginner artists. This means that if I'm moving one arm, I'm moving the other in the same way. So all of this is completely symmetrical. You will notice some asymmetry down here at the bottom, but if you ignore that, everything else is completely symmetrical. The idle pose is quite simple because this is a floating enemy, he's flying, we don't have any legs, you don't have to worry about overlapping things, and this is essentially it. Likewise, when we are talking about attacks, again, symmetry is important, so you need to keep things simple. I could have made the attack animation just one arm up in the air and then he swings one arm, but that would make things complicated for beginners. Keep in mind, this is art I made for my friend who is a programmer, so I needed to keep things simple so he can modify them at his own will. Now, one thing about this melee animation is if you ignore the visual effects, this is the animation. Very simple and easy to do. So just bring his arms up, symmetry again, bring them down, and that's all there is. You connect the movement of the path with the visual effect, so this smear attack. If you notice where the position of his blades are, 
when he swings down, they essentially took that path. So this smear gives us information where exactly the path of the blades were when he attacked. Okay, so if I change this angle to something else, they would have taken a different path. So for example, if I have made it quite a bit larger, then the area of attack would also be quite a bit larger. And this also enables you to create easy colliders in the game. Now let's talk about the summoning animation. This one is very simple. The character just brings his arms up and down. That's it. But if you look right here, there is a gold frame. It's this one. This is why knowing how to code is important. This animation by itself looks very bland. Nothing is happening except his arms moving. Okay? But if you think about a programmer, then you know that within the scene in the game, you can then instantiate or rather you can add and spawn different visual effects in his arms, maybe around his body and so on. Okay, so you can create all sorts of interesting sceneries within the game, perhaps even some camera shake and so on, just by using this base animation. You don't need anything else. But keep in mind that each of these effects, this one and this one, all of them would be in a separate animation file and then you combine them all within the same scene in the game. This is why knowing how to code is important because one, it saves you the time as an animator, as a pixel artist, and two, if you are working in a team, it makes the life to your programmer so, so much easier. Because now I don't have to create 15 different layers for different visual effects, I can just keep it as simple as this and then make animations for visual effects separately. Let's talk about the ranged attack animation. So we have three different states. First one is the preparation. This is when he spawns this sphere of energy. The second one is on the loop. This is essentially the pulsating energy of this sphere. And then the third one is the explosion of the sphere. Now, this is how it looks like right here in the file. But look here on the screen how it actually looks in the course. This sphere actually follows the enemy and then it explodes. So the way it looks right here in the A-Sprite file is very different how it behaves in the game. The reason is I have separated my visual effect away from the body. Okay, so the body is one animation, the visual effect is another. Now let's talk about the teleportation animation. This one is very simple and it is a fail. This means it was not accepted by the client. And why is that? Quite simply, the client wanted an animation, a glitchy type of teleportation such as this one Again, the same one in the game. And this type of effect is actually quite easy to do. So let me show you how it's done. This is the teleportation after. It's very simple. On each of the frames, you can fade out the body of the character and then you just select some body parts of the character and then move them to the side. For example, something like this or something like this and so on. And that's all there is to it. You do that a couple of times in different spaces, in different areas. Just on two frames is enough and he's gone. That's all that's needed. Really cool, right? And if you are interested in this failing teleportation, it's done in a similar way. On every frame I am moving these lines but vertically and also I am reducing the width of the character's body towards the middle a little bit. And you do this essentially every frame, one frame at a time, until he is gone. Okay, so the last animation would be actually death. And this one is exactly the same as teleportation, but in this case, this mask, this head stays put. It doesn't disappear. Then this specific object can still be a separate artifact within the game that you can use and move and use physics on and so on. Okay, so this was a very quick overview of this pixel art style. Keep in mind that I didn't cover backgrounds and items and props and so on and layers and color palettes, etc. If you are interested in this type of content, please let me know. And I will make few videos on this specific art style, but in those videos, I will actually show you everything one step at a time and I will draw live. So you will be able to follow along quite easily. It won't be this type of a style format where I just show you the end result, but rather I will draw everything from start to finish. Hopefully through this video, you have learned the value of knowing how to code at least the basics. You don't have to be a senior programmer to know few of these things and how they behave in the game engine. So if you want to learn the basics, but at the same time, learn good coding practices and how to actually make 
a metroidvania game in this specific art style and in this specific mechanics, click the link down in the description and join Mario's course. That's all for this video, I'm back and more videos are coming up, until next time, relax, enjoy and have fun.